Now let's do the refrigeration cycle in whole from start to finish. And then in lesson three, we'll do the same exercise with a commercial refrigeration system so you can see those similarities and differences in the refrigeration cycle. So I want to kind of burn this into your head when we do this. All right, so one more time, start to finish. We have superheated, high pressure, high temperature vapor leaving the compressor. At the beginning part of the condensing unit, the, it, that high pressure, high temperature superheated vapor is desuperheated. Once it hits a saturation point, 125 degrees, condensing begins, it changes state from vapor to liquid. Vapor to liquid, changing state, changing state as it moves through the condensing coil until the point where it's fully condensed. At this point, it is 100% liquid and cannot change state anymore, and it becomes subcooled so that we have a solid column of liquid that is entering the metering device. It enters the metering device, which drops the pressure of the refrigerant, which automatically drops the temperature of the refrigerant, and it, it is at its saturation point immediately. So it is changing state immediately at the beginning of the evaporator coil from liquid to vapor. As it moves through the evaporator, it's picking up latent heat, a tremendous amount of heat that must be um, absorbed by the refrigerant for it to change state. So it changes state from liquid to vapor until it is fully evaporated. At this point, it's 100% evaporated and picks up begins to pick up superheat which ensures that we have 100 percent vapor entering the compressor so at the tail end of the evaporator it picks up superheat raising the temperature of the sensible heat and the temperature of the refrigerant as it moves through the refrigeration line and it continues up and back to the compressor as low temperature, low pressure, super, superheated vapor, and it's compressed in the compressor, and the cycle begins again.